Hello. I'm gonna do a video about propagating lantana bushes or cloning them. So I have a few different varieties. I'm gonna talk about that in just a moment and it's extremely sunny out, sorry, I'm squinting. Um, yeah, I wanna, I wanna try to propagate one of these three. So I have three different varieties as you can see in the background and I'll talk about those in just a moment. And I'm gonna attempt to do some propagation through cuttings. And I'm gonna explain my procedure and how I'm gonna preserve those branches. And I, like many of you, have probably tried cuttings and had them dry out and die and have nothing happen. And I'm gonna show you a way to prevent that. And I'll show you that in just a moment. All right, first off, I wanna um, introduce you to the three different varieties that I have. So I have this variety, this reddish orange, but mostly red. And then right next to it, I have this variety. I love this. So it has the yellow, but it also has the red and they're kind of mixed up a little bit, a little bit more variety than this in one single bush. So I think this is my favorite, although I do like this one as well. And then I also have this yellow variety. And this is beautiful too, but I feel like this one's a little bit more visually striking just because it combines, I feel like it combines the colors of this with the colors of that. And so I think it would be fun to do some propagation experiments with this one. And so I'm gonna take a few cuttings, a bunch of cuttings, and see if I can get them to grow. And if they're very successful, eventually I might, you know, replace some of the yellows. I have a ton of yellow ones. I have three more over there, two more back there hiding. And I think it would be a lot more fun to have more of this color. And I guess if I have extras, I could always just give them away. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do. All right, so I have this alchemy jar, as you can see, and I've put dirt in it. And I added a little bit of water, not too much water because there's nowhere for the water to go. You want just enough water so that the soil is not dry, but you don't necessarily want it damp because you wanna make sure that there's oxygen able to get all the way to the bottom down here. All right, you don't want any rotting to occur. And so this is uh, basically a little biodome or a little enclosed ecosystem where water doesn't escape. And it makes it a very good um, environment for propagation of plants that still have soft tissue. Since I'm gonna be doing green cuttings, I want them to not dry out. And so the hope is that I can keep them from drying out long enough for them to promote root growth, have roots, so that I can remove them and propagate them successfully. And so that's going to be the, um, that's going to be what I'm going to attempt to do. And then I wanted to mention that the procedures I'm showing you can be adapted to any plant. Like for example, that orange tree, lemon tree, I've done air layering and cuttings of those. Those two are grapevines that I've done, that are, those are actually cuttings of my grapevine that are successfully taking off. My backyard's basically like Frankenstein's laboratory of plants. And you can do these procedures that I'm explaining in this video with any plants that you have. And so I've just done the ones that I like the most. And that's what I have growing in my backyard. So feel free to adapt these teachings to any type of um, plant propagation. They're very successful. If you can keep the if you can keep, keep the cutting from drying out, then it'll be successful. So before I do anything, I usually scope out the plant that I'm going to be doing cuttings from. I just want to make sure I'm scoping out the best and healthiest branches from the plant, so I can make sure that that's what I do cuttings of. All right. So you'll want to identify a branch that has nodes on it, a branch that looks healthy. And I'll typically cut off the apical meristem, which is the very tip. And so you won't count that as one of your nodes. Usually the plant will put way too much energy into the apical meristem if you don't cut it off. And so by cutting that off, you further promote root growth. So for example, I'll look here, don't count this. So I have one, two, three, there's four nodes pretty close to each other. I can cut that off, all right. And I know it doesn't look like much here, but this is genetically equivalent to these guys. And so we're good on that. All right, another one, optical mirror stem off. And then we want to count three nodes. One, two, three. We'll just do a good new four, so now we'll do three. We don't want it too long since we're sticking it into my, um, my globe thing. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
All right, now that we have our cuttings, we're gonna go ahead and clean them up. We don't want any flowers, leaves, things like that. We don't want any nutrients going to flowers. You don't want nutrients going to the development of leaves necessarily right away. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to promote is root growth. And so if you take off um, any distractions for the plant, it'll help the plant to put all its nutrients into root growth because it'll realize that in order to survive, it has to promote roots. So you're basically forcing natural selection. Hey puppy. All right, and so yeah. We're going to go ahead and cut all this extra stuff off, cut these leaves off, make sure that these are clean. It also makes them easier to stick in the soil. And you can use your scissors or your pruning tool or a screwdriver or whatever to poke a hole in the soil if you're worried about damaging the stem because if you, you know, put too much force on the stem as you're pushing down, you might break it. So just be careful. My soil is not too hard. Oh, and I forgot to mention in my soil, I actually added a little bit of water crystals just to help suck the water out of the soil so it doesn't rot the soil. And it also helps hold a little bit more moisture to give the plant something to, to sense. I don't know how smart, I mean, I don't know if plants can actually sense things, but if the stems can sense the moisture in the dirt, I think it'll help further promote root growth. And then obviously you want the humidity to be approaching 100% in your jar so that your stems don't dry out so that they have time to put out roots and so yeah so yeah make sure you're cleaning up all your stems all the flowers off all the buds off you don't want any of those nutrients going to develop a flower bud and i've made that mistake before left those on and of course it fails because it's trying to make that flower grow same thing if you have young vines that are trying to make fruit you cut the fruit off the vine is far more likely to come back the next year i've left them on and had the entire vine die just because it was giving everything it had to try to make that fruit all right, so there's all my cuttings. You can see some of them I left the leaf on, some of them I cut them off. And then here's the final product. Cleaned up in the jar, and I'll probably leave it in the house so it doesn't get too hot. And then hopefully within a few weeks, I would guess three to four weeks, I should have some decent root growth. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.